Hey, in this video we're going to look at Unity build callbacks, build settings, and a release checklist for my finished game Chesscraft. And I've noticed that most programming tutorials show off incomplete or toy projects, so I thought this might interest people. So the version information might show up in a lot of places when you're playing Chesscraft. There's this about page, version 1.0 at the top there. There's a test menu, for example. Uh, if I zoom in, there's the version right there, and it can show up all over the place. But if we follow the don't repeat yourself principle, I really only want to write this version in one place, otherwise I'm going to screw it up and it's going to be different when I forget. So the one place I decided was player settings. So file, build settings, player settings, and then on the right, other settings, 1.0, and I actually have a script that will insert this string into the project when I build a new Android APK. So to do this, I'm using the interface preprocess build with report. So I've made my class, called it whatever I want, and then I'm implementing this interface. And I have to write this code like this and then make something happen with it. So whenever I do a build, it's going to run the version manager refresh version text. So let's look at that. So this is the version manager. There's refresh version text. So it's going to put that about page text to the version string. And you can see here it's just that application.version that I have in the player settings. It's also going to do the big uh, testing GUI console for the detailed string. And this has a lot of information in it like my uh, home URL to send back information uh, over the network. There's uh, when the version was built, and it's all referring back to the same information, so I don't really ever make a mistake here. It's all automatic. So something else we see in player settings is publishing settings. And here we have the file, which is my key store. And I need to type in my password every time I want to make a new Android SP APK and sign it as, you know, my Google Play Chesscraft account. And so here's my Chesscraft folder, and I've made a system where underscore is ignored by my version tracking. So here's my git ignore file, I've got underscore star. So for example, security in here, this has my private key file and notes about how it was generated and the website I used for it. So this underscore security folder is not going to be on my repo, even though it's a private repo. I don't even put it on there, though it is part of my hard drive backups I do sometimes. Because if anyone can get this key, then they can pretend to be Chesscraft and publish anywhere. Now some of you may have noticed I'm running uh, Linux, a Linux desktop, and I'm using the Unity build for this. So Unity on Linux, building Android. Uh, it hasn't been always smooth, especially since I started uh, a couple years ago. Recently, it's gotten a lot better. But I've always been taking notes on my successful builds and what versions of SDKs, NDKs, JDKs I've done and interesting little steps for that. And I recommend taking notes like this in general. For example, it's made me more brave enabling features like IL2CPP. This is where it takes your C-sharp code and tries to speed it up as C++ code. And originally, in my build system, which I had working and it was great and stable, uh, I could not enable this because my uh, SDK or, or something was a version that was too old. So instead of being scared of breaking everything, I had good notes, so I just took a shot at it and I was able to turn it on. And later I was able to upgrade my Unity version too uh, and that also sped it up, and it sped up my AI code a lot, which was obviously important for a chess AI sandbox game. So at some point you may need to go into Edit, Preferences, External Tools, and install the SDK and NDK, and I don't think we need to do JDK anymore. And just as an example, these are my paths, but don't worry about specifics too much. These are definitely going to change, but I find even getting an example of what these exact paths should be can be hard. 
you know, you don't know how deep you need to go into the path to refer to it. Well, this is what mine looked like anyway. I also have a release checklist, and this is just so I don't make a, a brainless mistake while I'm, you know, doing a patch at midnight. So just disable and enable various things, increment the version, increment the bundle code, make sure that this is the back end. I got a password reminder if anyone wants to try to figure that one out. Uh, dev, dev build is off, and I have basic testing use cases. So I figure if I create my own piece and change how it moves, and then create my own board and lay down that piece a bit, and play my AI on that board, and then play one adventure board, that's like a pretty general, thorough testing. That's all I really have time to do, but I'll do that every release. It takes a few minutes, and specific steps per platform. I also have a lot of scripts I use to help me with testing and deploying and development. For example, there's get adb device id. This will ask for my Android debugging devices that are USB connected to my computer. And then Python will parse that to find the, the one that's for my phone, because sometimes Unity has a weird emulated one. So that's the ID of my phone. There's also monitor Android with adb. So if I connect my phone to my computer with USB and I run this, then it will show me all the debug.log output. And that will look like this when I run it. So for example, we're seeing here, it's checking what my patron status is. It's checking if we have a game in progress that was autosaved. And that's just normal unity debug.log output. Finally, there's the uninstall and reinstall scripts. So when I run a build, I'll always call it chesscraft.apk is the newest one, and then later rename to all the historical versions. And once I've actually built it, the reinstall and launch on phone script will get the device, it'll uninstall it, it will install it with that new APK, and it'll actually launch the game on my phone. So over the past year, this has saved a lot of time with on an Android device swiping to uninstall and then waiting to install and then launching the game, finding the icon again. So that's been really great. So to wrap up, the uh, code that you see in this video is free and open source on an MIT license. And uh, if you have ideas for the next video or you're curious about a script you saw, just ask in the comments and I'll make a next video. And the full version of Chesscraft is free to play, so check it out. And thanks for watching.